December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. When Pearl Harbor happened, I just couldn't understand uh, why, why it would happen. I can remember hearing it on the radio. I couldn't believe it. We couldn't believe it, so we all went home, of course, and listened to the radio. Had to believe it. But when I find out that it's been bombed by the, the, the country of my ancestors, of course, that, would, that was just devastating because I didn't know what they would happen to us, being that we look like Japanese. But uh, the biggest shock was uh, when uh, about two weeks after the FBI came and took our father to a, a camp and we didn't see him and he didn't come back for about a year. I could not believe it, that it was happening to us. And I kept saying to myself, this is wrong, this is unfair, why doesn't someone do something about it? I was 14 when I went in. It's like uh, you going to a uh, summer camp. It's uh, a life like that. But for my folks, it was pretty hard. They lost everything. We were taken to Heart Mountain, Wyoming. Uh, from there, we were loaded onto cattle trucks and all stood up and taken to this camp, which seemed like miles and miles away. They were barracks, and they were paper lined tar paper lined, and they had, oh, you know, separation of boards, at least that wide, in which the dust would come up and the wind was always blowing. And I can remember my mother every morning trying to sweep the, the sand that had gotten into the uh, barracks. I guess we just mostly sat around and talked about our future. We didn't know what, how long the war was going to last, and so we just sat and kind of speculated on how long we were going to be in camp. The uh, living conditions, well, we all ate in uh, mess halls, so it was no family life. In order to have family life, you'd have to stay in uh, your room and uh, try to bring the food in and have a family life. The kids would run off and eat by themselves with the other kids, and the you know, parents were left alone to eat by themselves. And that, to me, was the beginning of the breakdown of the uh, uh, Japanese-American family. Uh, there were occasionally black block uh, parties that we attended, but I think there was a sort of a false gaiety to those parties. Uh, we were trying to cover up some real deep-seated, you know, uh, loneliness or anger or whatever you want to call it, and uh, we just wanted to just act like we were happy, and so we just uh, tried to make the best of it. When I went to camp, I was absolutely devastated because I thought that was the end of my career, uh, you know, education, because I had, was born and reared in California, and my goal was to go to UCLA. But uh, not knowing uh, when the war was going to end, you had to make other plans. So I figured the best thing was to go to college and get an education. And I wanted to build things, so I wanted to be an engineer. The only thing I knew about Nebraska was that they played in the 39 Rose Bowl game, I think it was, 
and they lost. I tell you, I, I didn't know what to expect, except uh, in your brochures, you know, you have these Nebraska brochures, beautiful pictures of the campus. And so I took off. I gave it no thought. My mother and father were, you know, being the youngest in the family and, and a girl being young and naive, why well, they were very apprehensive. But I thought, oh, here's an opportunity to further my education and to get out of this darn place. And then there was a, a math teacher and tried to get me brought up to the level of the other students because I started about three months after the classes had started, so I was behind. But I just, uh, they were very, very kind, very helpful. And I guess they really understood my situation. And I can remember Miss White from the student uh, uh, union came over to me one day and said, how would you like to earn a meal? And I said, oh, that would be lovely. And what do I have to do? And she says, oh, pass out water. So I was the female Gunga in there for a while, <laughs> you know, just putting water on the trays as the students went by. Now, that's an example of how kind, you know, they came to me and said, would you like to do this? And I don't know of any other university that would do that. Oh, the pro professors were very good. Uh, a uh, math instructor, I can still remember him. He was uh, very uh, forceful and uh, I learned a lot from him. Think of the fars uh, foresight that the uh, chancellor and the university had in, in going out on a limb because there were very few schools that would accept Japanese American students at that time because they were afraid. That, and uh, for that I'll be forever grateful. What if Nebraska, if we didn't go to Nebraska? I probably would have been farming on my father's ranch. Some of these, uh, my uh, colleagues may have been working in their parents' drugstore or grocery store or whatever. Maybe even pushing the lawnmower. But you know, they achieved what? Heads of departments, earned their PhDs and MDs, become teachers. You know, we just can't, I don't think you can really put a value on, on uh, our education at Nebraska. Oh, I, I, I certainly owe it to Nebraska for giving me that chance. I mean, I, in camp, you know, I had no future and they gave me that chance. And I just can't thank it to Nebraska, what they did for me, I'm sorry. Nebraska is my sacred ground. It's just like my hometown where I was born. <laughs>